season four of the comeback. Oh, look at you. All right. Huh? All right. What we're doing here is we're taking guys who fought in the UFC before and were climbing up and, and getting to a certain level, and they fell off for some reason. Why did they fall off? And here's a chance to come back. Welcome, guys. No bullshit. I am genuinely excited about this season. There's a lot of talent in this room. Serious, serious talent. So this season isn't like all the other seasons where these guys have to be spoon-fed, you know, babied. I know 100% that every guy here is a fighter. You guys have what it takes in here. You all know it. So the way this is going to work is we are going to pick teams today. But this season, there are no team coaches. Both teams will get the opportunity to train with some of the best mixed martial artists. Randy Couture, George St. Pierre, and Mark Delagrati. And these are just three of several mixed martial arts experts we're bringing in to help you. Now, you guys are going to fight a preliminary fight. If you win that fight, you move on to the semifinals. You win the semifinals match, you move on to the finals. But the most important thing is, the two guys that walk away in their weight class, the winners, will get a shot at the title. This is your deal. This is your big opportunity and your chance to get a shot at the world title. Make the most of it, guys. Good luck, boys. Right. We could be doing this at home. <laughs> One of the things that makes this show very interesting is, is that it's not up to us coaches what they want to do. And today, Team No Love, the blue team, decided to take a day off. Some of these guys, they're very lazy, you know, they, because they're veterans. And so now some of them, they just don't want to work hard. They just uh, think they can win a fight by using their skill, but sometimes it's take more than that. UFC 60 is Matt Hughes versus Hoist Gracie. It's, it's a huge fight. It's a monster fight. Matt, the most dominant welterweight champion of all times, versus the legend, the guy who started it all, Hoist Gracie. And we decided to let the guys watch this fight. Man, who's about to get knocked out? George St. Pierre went over to the house to watch uh, the fight with him. Whether Matt wins or loses, George St. Pierre is fighting Matt Hughes again. And all these guys that are in this competition that are 170 pounds, Interesting enough, we'll end up fighting either George St. Pierre or Matt Hughes for the welterweight title. The legend has returned! That was awesome, you know, that was an awesome deal. Today I uh, took the guys to watch the YMCA to bring them swim, do some sprint on the water, and uh, go play basketball just to change their mind and break the routine, you know. Thank you, Mr. Cote. What's up, Chuck? Whoa! Whoa! What's going on, man? What's up, guys? What are you doing? How come they didn't do a special announcement for you? I'm, no, I'm nobody. Here. Everybody else gets a special announcement. <laughs> I'm not Chuck Liddell. <laughs> Matt Hughes just showed up. There was no big announcement or anything. He just popped on in. What's up, Georgie? Oh, yeah. I don't know if George has a problem with Matt. You know, uh, they already fought each other. And, uh, I don't know, man. Matt don't get the announcement. No secret. They're going to fight each other again. Go back. Go back. Open the door, and I'm going to make the announcement. <laughs> the world welterweight champion of the world. Did you make that hat yourself? 
Tony Carter. <laughs> But I don't think that they hate each other, you know. I just think that it's a strange situation. You guys need me for something, guy, today? Because I'm gonna leave, it's already two trainers. Yeah, you know? yeah, I'm cool. And you don't know. want to be in the same place as Matthew? No, no. Uh, yeah, <laughs> no, no. I'm the number one contender for the welterweight title right now. So I don't want to be in, in the same room than Matthews. I don't want to be friend with him. I don't want to share any technique with him. So I, I, I leave the training center. Ding. Take care, guy. Take care, man. See you uh, later. Take care, my friend. Are you out of here? Yeah, are you, are you nice going? Nice hat. <laughs> Me, I'm out of here. You guys, uh, you and Chuck stay here. We'll take care of your job for you. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> If he wants to leave, that's fine with me. See you later. Chuck and I, are, we can run things without him needing him here. After the semifinal matchups were made, Matt Hughes thought it would be cool to take everybody out for a sushi dinner. So we're eating sushi. I'm sitting right across from GSP. And Matt what, looks at the schedule and says to GSP, he says, Since you're avoiding me, do you want the blue team or the gray team I, I today? I'll take you out. And I think that Matt, he just has that personality where he likes to step on people, to be dominant over people. Do you want me to show up? Do you want me to stay away? Or show up if you want. Then roll a little bit. Teach me something. Uh, one condition, if you teach me on uh, one thing too. Okay. Did you teach me something, I teach you something. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> Kick his ass. I see you, Dan. Well, what? I ain't even say nothing. It's not like you got real tiny lips. I can see those lips moving around. <laughs> If the party, can you hear me? The winner of the welterweight final gets a shot at either Matt Hughes or George St. Pierre, and they get the opportunity to win the title. George St. Pierre or uh, Matt Hughes, whoever, I'm coming after him. You know, they better take me serious because I'm definitely taking them serious and I'm coming after them. Yeah. <laughs> Here I am, you know, one step away from getting that title shot. And uh, I plan on doing it. I'm just living the dream. Taking out Chris, then choking out Matt Hughes and bringing back that title to Long Island, New York. hi -o! I think that every guy that leaves this competition leaves a better fighter. This has been a great opportunity for them. And uh, you definitely might see some of these guys back in the UFC. Thank you, guys. I think the person who grew the most uh, from this experience is myself. I think I, I learned more than everybody here. I learned from Matt Serra, from Shoni Carter, uh, Randy Kutzer, Mark Lehman, Mark Delegrati, uh, Travis Luther. Almost everybody teach me something uh, good. Hey, Cardine. Bye-bye. Hi, guy. Hey, I can't wait to fight Matthews. Uh, right now, I'm a lot better fighter than I used to be uh, the first time I fought him. Now the four finalists are going to go home, they'll train with their own teams and prepare basically for the biggest fight of their careers. And if they're anything like the last three seasons, get ready for an awesome finale. Right now, live on Spike, we will talk to the two men who will battle at 170 pounds. At his home in Illinois, there you see the champion, Matt Hughes. At his home in Montreal, it's GSP, George St. Pierre. Matt, let's start with you and talk about the ultimate fighter four first. We've got a great matchup between Chris Lytle and Matt Serra. Your thoughts on the fight we will see later tonight here on Spike. Well, it's a good matchup. It's a typical striker versus grappler. Um, you know, Sarah's going to try and look to take the fight to the mat, and uh, Chris is going to try to stand up with him and slug it out. So uh, if it goes to the mat, uh, Sarah's going to have the advantage. If it stands up, uh, Chris is going to have the advantage. Well, we will see what happens. George St. Pierre, you were a trainer on the Ultimate Fighter 4. You understand both of these men very well. Sarah and Lytle, your thoughts on the upcoming fight? Well, I don't know. Uh, I became a friend with both of them, and they both got their strength and weaknesses, and uh, I just look forward to see a, a good fight. I wish them good luck. Now, Matt, after your last victory uh, against BJ Penn, uh, George came into the octagon and said that he wasn't impressed, and you guys exchanged some words. What, what was that all about? What did he say to you? How much of that was hype on his part, and how much did that piss you off? Uh, well, I, I'm not saying I'm pissed off. Everybody wants my belt, you know. I, I tell George St. Pierre just to get in line because, I mean, anybody fighting for the UFC in the welterweight division wants, to, wants a shot at the title. It's no big deal. Uh, but uh, for him to come in there and say that, I, I don't care. 
Uh, I pulled him to the side after he said his words in front of everybody, and I said, hey, you just showed me the type of person you are. You know? You're the type of guy that is going to come in here after I won, come in the octagon after I won, and, um, and try and talk on the mic. And uh, just showed him I was a little disappointed. Hey, GSP, I think that that was pretty atypical of the George St. Pierre that we know. Do you wish you wouldn't have stepped into the octagon and angered Matt Hughes? Was that just uh, 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 an error in judgment, or is that the real George St. Pierre modern day? Well, I, uh, I did a mistake, and uh, after I did that, I uh, went into uh, Matt Hughes' uh, locker room, and I apologized like a man. And uh, sometimes it takes more, uh, more courage to apologize than do, it, do the mistake itself. And I think so far, Matt Hughes has uh, been a lot more disrespectful towards me than I was towards him. So uh, I just look forward to fight him in one week. And after that, win or lose, I will shake his hand. But I, I truly believe in my chance, and I want to I wanna have the belt. Sounds to me like you two should fight for the belt in about a week. How's that sound, Matt and George? <laughs> I think it's a great idea, Mike. All right, Matt, thank you very much at home in Illinois. Thank you very much at home thank in you. Montreal. George St. Pierre, we'll see you live on pay-per-view one week from tonight. For the winner by split decision, and now the welterweight winner of the ultimate finale, Matt the Terror! Congratulations, you win the $100,000, you win the $100,000 uh, sponsorship from uh, Zions, you win the 2007 Zion TC car, you win the limited edition jersey, two carat diamond watch, and more importantly, let me get this straight, you win uh, the title shot against the winner of George St. Pierre and Matt Hughes. Give us your thoughts on the upcoming battle between George St. Pierre and Matt Hughes. Man, the longer it goes, I'll give it to George St. Pierre because he's just such an athlete and a freak, you know? Uh, if Matt Hughes gets on top of him, it's a problem. Whoever gets on top in that fight, you know, and the longer it stands up, I give it to St. Pierre. Basically, that's a rough one to call, man. <laughs> now, you're going to get the shot at whoever wins. Who are you rooting for? Who, you, who would you like to face? What's better for you, for your style? My heart goes out to St. Pierre because I think he's a freaking great guy. Hughes is a bit of a dick fight Hughes, you know? But uh, I'd rather fight Hughes, but uh, if it's safe, I'll fight whoever they put in front of me like I always have. When I fought Matt Hughes the first time, I, I lost that fight even before uh, I started. <laughs> George St. Pierre is a very, very dynamic fighter. He's got great striking skills. He, he lands some devastating punches. Great straight punches, good combinations. He's, he's got great submission skills. And there is the challenger, the number one contender in the welterweight division, George Rush St. Pierre. And now, everybody, I want you to listen to me. his opinion it might stink but it's his opinion what i said to matt Hughes was was true i was not impressed by his victory he can't think of anything else to say but what i said to him the mistake i did is to say that in front of five million pay-per-view viewers and all the crowd in the arena when i fought matt Hughes the first time i remember in the stare downs i couldn't even look him in the eyes because i was too impressed i was fighting my idol i was fighting a, a guy that for me it was impossible to beat he made a mistake doesn't change anything to what, whatever he thought going into the fight. Let's get it on, come on! The American, 33 years old, eight years the elder of the French-Canadian challenger, George St. Pierre. Everything else is virtually even. It's time! George Rush St. Pierre! for your 
UFC Welterweight Championship. I gave you instructions to your dressing room. Do you have any questions from the challenger? Any questions from the champion? Big hands. Fight, fight clean, fight hard, fight fair, let's go. Very, very dynamic athlete. Nice straight, long punches by George. High kick, and versatile with his striking. Man, he really snaps a hit. Spinning back kick. Remember, he landed with that in the first matchup in O'Connor, it didn't follow up. Nice stiff jab by George St. Pierre. Really using his range well. Oh, cut him. Now trying to clinch. Nice work by George. George is doing a very nice job here. Nice takedown by George. Nice punches. Matt's scrambling up. Oh, nice good knee. knee by St. Pierre. Nice work by George St. Pierre here. Great job done by the challenger here in round one. Great footwork by George St. Pierre. They both kick at the There's same the time. There's the attempt to take down by Matt. Nice double underhooks. Matt trying to, GSP doing a great job of scrambling wow. out of that takedown. And the power of Matt Hughes. Oh, Superman punch caught him. Oh, Hughes is hurt. Matt Hughes is hurt. And the round is over. Right, take a look at this replay. I'm going to see the takedown here. Superman punch right in the head. Nice shot by George. Followed by a nice little left hook. Very nice. Just to let Joe know we're thinking of him. Dynamic, this guy. Hero worship is gone. Caught him again. He's keying off Matt's jab, slipping outside and throwing a long jab of his own. It's, oh! oh big kick. Down kick. goes Hughes. Oh, he's hurt. St. Pierre trying to hurt. finish it. He's big time hurt. With the elbows. Oh, it is. Oh, it's over. over. George St. Pierre. <laughs> Kick to the head, right to the side of the head. As Matt was thinking, takedown. Grounded pound, landed some big shots. It wasn't until he went to the elbow here on the top that John saw that Matt wasn't defending himself. What a difference from the first fight. When he stuns Hughes, he goes in for the finish, unlike in the first matchup, Randy. Shin bone right to the head. And the torch is passed tonight here in Sacramento. And now, the new UFC Walter White Champion of the World. I, I come from very far. You know, I had a, I had a very hard way up here. And wow, it's, it's just amazing. I, you know, I'm so surprised, I'm so happy. I, I can't even like cry, you know. I, it's, I, can't, I can't describe uh, my feeling right now. It's too, too much. Ladies and gentlemen, your new welterweight champion of the world, George St. Pierre. Thank you very much, everybody. I will not consider myself champion. I will consider myself a challenger who's going to fight for the title. <laughs> George St. Pierre is easily the top 170 pound fighter in the world. He is an incredible athlete, he's explosive, he's excellent in all areas of the game. A live look inside the locker room of the welterweight champion, George Rush St. Pierre. Let's go! Big John McCarthy gets us started. Matt has greatly improved his striking skills. I knew that he was going to try to make me believe that he wanted to stand up, and as soon as he would have a chance, he would try to put me down. There's the attempt to take down by Matt. Nice double underhooks. Matt trying to GSP doing a great job of scrambling wow. out of that takedown. That's why I had a little edge on him, you know? I was able to, to know his strategy. I'm not getting caught up with what he did to Matt Hughes. It's not, it, you start thinking like that, oh, look what he did to him. I don't care, we're good. He's not gonna do that to me. Oh, right to that kind of finish. That's a powerful He's a lot better than he used to be, and I'm gonna have to take him very seriously. Every round that goes by, every minute that passes, when I shouldn't have lasted that long, I shouldn't be in there in his face fighting, you know, 
that's when he's gonna realize he's in for a fight and everybody's gonna realize this ain't no joke. I'm gonna let my punches go, uh, even if I like the guy. I mean, it's business. He's gonna know he's in a fight. I've taken some of the best fighters that ever went in the octagon, bell to bell, and uh, I got the experience to pull stuff off. Matt Serra is fighting for the world UFC welterweight title. He's gonna put everything he's got because for him it's the chance of, uh, of his life. Uh, I've been in the game a while. Since 2001, I've been fighting for the UFC. It'll be good to get that recognition, you know, to have that belt. I mean, I mean, it's gonna sound cliche, but it will be a, a dream come true. Matt the Terra Sarah. Sarah is only 5'6", and the reach advantage is dynamic and dominant for George Rush St. Pierre at a six inch difference between the challenger, Matt Serra. It's time! George Rush St. Pierre! Do I have any questions from the challenger? Do I have any questions from the champion? I want you to fight clean, fight hard, fight fair, touch gloves. Back to your corners. Yeah, and if you look at those two fights, that's Sarah a slip. Is doing a better. Oh, yeah. Sarah, 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 Sarah Conklin, Conklin Saint Pierre. Pierre. Sarah Buckle, St. Pierre. Oh, St. Pierre down again. Good Lord. He's hurt him three times in the last He's 60 seconds. It it is over. Over. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Woo. Let's take a look at it again. Right hand right in the back that of the one. head. It looked like that was a little bit more off balance than anything. But no, no, See, he that's where I thought, that's the, where I thought the, the slip the was, yep. When I he think, hit him in the back of the head, you think, guys? I think Matt is so strong that a punch like that, just clip in the back, and that one really wobbled, hurt him really badly. Really wobbled him. No legs at all on George right here. And Matt continued to come forward. And stayed calm, too. Here's the end of the fight. Mount and just dropping bombs. Wow. And now, the new UFC welterweight champion of the world. I trained really hard for this. Uh, tonight I get beat by a better fighter than, than myself. I made a mistake. I got caught with taking a left hook. And I have no excuse. I was in great shape. My training was very good. And congratulations to Matt Saro. You know, I raised my, my, my hand to him. I, I'm a very proud athlete. Of course, I would like to have a rematch. I don't know what's gonna happen, but he is the man. He beat me fair and square. <laughs> and uh, I'm very sad right now, but uh, I'm gonna have to, to come back, you know, stronger next time. George St. Pierre, ladies and gentlemen. I saw Dana White, George St. Pierre, I saw Josh Koscheck, and it was like magic. Like, man, this is, this is gonna happen. All right, guys, welcome to the UFC Training Center. It's obvious who your coaches are. George St. Pierre, greatest welterweight on the planet. He's excited to be here and to uh, teach you guys what him and his coaches know. Let's do it. Moving in the house with that TKO victory. Woo! Mike Silver has got a lot of power. He's a, he's a very, very dangerous guy. Psycho Shivichan against Tommy Greer was pretty much a grappling match. Oh, Tommy was actually impressive. He went for a couple of takedowns. But Psycho most of the time managed to use his judo superior skill to bring the fight on the ground and stay on top for the most of the fight. Psycho. Congrats, kid. Man, this is the greatest day of my life. You can never know how great it feels. It's, it's, there's no words to say it, man. You gotta get in here to know how it feels.
nickname is Bruce Leroy from getting into fights in school. He's embracing the nickname. They kicked me out of school, so every day I'd go to the gym like it was school. <laughs> Came out looking like a banana. <laughs> a beat up Bruce banana. <laughs> How it affected me was lots of discipline where I didn't have it. Made me a better person, actually cooled down my hot-headed temperature. <laughs> I'm gonna go in there with every bit intention to hurt this guy. Basically trying to put him out as quickly and as violently as possible. But I'm gonna do it with a smile, I guarantee it. <laughs> you okay? Oh, he's got it. He's got it. Right hook in, Alex. Right hook in. He's got it. He's got it. He's got it. He's out. He's out. Look. He's out. Watch this. Watch this. <laughs> My boy, man. I love this kid. Bruce Leroy might be for real. This kid has takedown defense, he's got some submissions, and his stand-up looks pretty good. It's going to be interesting to see how far uh, Bruce Leroy can make it through the competition. <laughs> Good job, brother. Good job, kid. Very nice. Don't go hurting yourself now. Get up in there and get your uh, name called. Sorry, bro. What's your name? Bruce Leroy. What is it? Bruce Leroy. Bruce Leroy. All right. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people that want to punch me in the face right now. <laughs> Especially because I just smiled the whole time. I can't help it. <laughs> he smiled the whole time he was fighting that. Bruce Leroy moves into the house with the submission. Good fight, guys. I hope you enjoy all my fights, and I'm here to display martial arts in its fullest form and wholeheartedness. Thank you. Funky beat. Pablo starts the fight strong with good kicks, and Michael managed to bring the fight on the ground. And his stand-up's good, too. He hits hard. He's a beast on the ground. He throws everything with bad intentions, too. More like Michael Tyson. <laughs> Michael Johnson is a great wrestler, and he seems like a kid that goes in to finish. He's nasty. And the winner by unanimous decision, Michael Johnson. Man, to win a big fight like this, it feels like you're on top of the world, you know? I'm going to push the pace. I'm going to push a lot of buttons. They can't handle it. You know, they can deal with me in the cage. Dude, you were yeah, no, nasty. Very good. Good. good job, very kid. Good. Very, very good. He was a tough guy, too. Yeah, he was. I like that. Michael Johnson is going to be a contender for sure in this competition. fight because uh, it's what I'm passionate about. I'm also a commercial fisherman in Alaska, but uh, I enjoy fighting a little bit more. I'm from a place where we don't really have a coach. We do our own thing. We, we uh, kind of just work off each other and train each other. Uh, I do have my own little trick, but you'll all see it over the rest of the season. Give it team. Gonna win by guillotine. Kid on top. No, no, I don't want. Good. Good. Yeah. Raise the wrist. Raise the wrist. Raise the wrist. That's his main move. Inside <laughs> Throw that wrist. You don't have to throw it here. He's like... Sorry, Good job, Tony. Good job, kid. Congrats. You know what George said to me? That kid's gonna win by guillotine shell. Yeah, absolutely. Cody's moving in the house in the submission. I, I know Cody by name. He has one thing that he does unbelievably well. It's his guillotine choke. 
That's my Mackenzie team. It's like a guillotine, but guillotine's here. I flip it over and go this way so it hits, hits both arteries, and sooner or later they'll go to sleep or they'll tap. All right, guys. The fights were great. Every one of you gave it everything you had. You guys did it. You made it. Congratulations. You're in. I'm looking forward to the house. Wish we could have some girls in it, but it's cool. You are going to leave this place a completely different fighter. Better in every way. When you leave this house, you'll never want to do it again, but you'll be glad you did. All right? Hey, guys. I'm here, and no hard feelings. If you doubted me, then I'm sorry, <laughs> but I'm on the show. Congratulations and welcome. Watch out for me in the house. My plan is to break everybody. So uh, be on your toes, because I'm going to be on my... Go home, celebrate, kick back. Tomorrow we pick teams. All right? Have a good night. Thank you. All right. I am to train and get picked on the team. We're going to get back into the gym, man, and I think uh, St. Pierre and Koscheck are going to choose the fighters for their teams. How does St. Pierre get a good name, man? No idea, man. Yes, yes, Hopefully Koscheck picks me and uh, I think it'll benefit me the most to be on his team. It'll definitely benefit him the most. You can just say you want to get on Koscheck's team. I don't. I don't. Uh, I'd rather be on GSP's team. All around fighter, I think he'll be better for me in the long run. My picks are in. I got it. The process of us kind of, you know, ranking the guys. We ranked them 1 to 14, and, you know, we had, obviously, Michael Johnson, number one. I think he's probably um, the best athlete that we have here on the show. Um, you know, we had uh, Mark Stevens, number two. That wrestler kid is going to be a freaking character, too, you know? Think so? He's, got, he's cocky. Mark Stevens is, yeah. He's, he's, he's cocky. He's cocky. I like that. We had uh, uh, Psycho and Savat three and four so you know we had a nice little uh, little rank what did they do the last time they let you pick first pick or first fight i believe and i would uh i would go for person rather than fight in my opinion that's the way we did it with rashad we were able to win the fights and get control anyway so it was if we, uh, I think if we get the first pick he's gonna waste one choice he's gonna take uh, steven on his side right away are you sure yeah i think they're buddies I know Koscheck probably knew that I knew that Mark Seven was his friend, so he knew that I was not going to pick him. Give me a piece of paper, I write down their name first. So when I'm next, I'm next, I'll, I'll, I'll fake it. So Koscheck can, can see, he, he's gonna think he's, they're my first choice. Let's do this. He's gonna pick them before I do. So what I did is I put him a big character in, in my fake list number one. So like by doing so, he would have lost one of his uh, chances. Do you think he's gonna bite? We don't know, but it's worth a shot. We'll see if he's smart. So as we go into the, uh, the team picks, I noticed that George St. Pierre is holding his team picks in his hand and it's facing me and Koscheck. Hey, you got, you got all your hanging out there, bro. It's a strategy. <laughs> On the top of GSP's list, it says Stevens. So I see Koscheck's list, and Koscheck's list says Michael Johnson. And right here first. One, two, three. And you know, Stevens and Dan. Stevens used to wrestle for Koscheck. So I guess Koscheck's thinking of this as kind of one of his guys. If, if I go first, should I just go for it? Because I think I can get them both. Yeah. Yeah. You can't Of course. They won't. <laughs> Good morning, guys, and welcome to the team picks. I have this coin. Yellow is Koscheck, red is GSP. All right. Josh Koscheck wins the flip. Team Koscheck, you either have the chance to pick the first fighter or pick the first fight. The team that wins the fight keeps control and gets to keep picking the fights. <laughs> uh, that just changed some things. Uh, we take the pick. Let's take the pick. We'll take the pick. You want to pick the first fighter? Yes. Okay. So you get to pick the first fight. 
All right. Okay. Go ahead. Pick your first fighter. We'll take uh, Mark Stevens. All right, GSP, who's your first pick? I pick Michael Johnson. So he made Koscheck go after Stevens first so he could get Michael Johnson. Exactly. Well played, George St. Pierre. Well played. You will be a minister of war, praying for war. Pray, a minister of death, praying for war. <laughs> but until then, you're just. You, you're not even, you will <laughs> For me, I'm a coach, you know, I'm the coach of the season, but I, I think I would be a better use for this guy as a training partner than a coach. I let my coach coach my team, and I'm more like a training partner with these guys. bring many different coaches. Greg Jackson is a strategist, the maestro. He's the guy that makes the music play. <laughs> Make sure you keep your mental acuity about you. Right now I have John Denaher, and uh, he's the smartest guy that I've met in my entire life. He's like a, like a dictionary, like an encyclopedia of, of knowledge, not only of jiu-jitsu. There's more than just victory. There's also an ideal or a beautiful victory. That's what George always tries to espouse in his fighting that's, philosophy. That's when a martial artist, that's when the art, artist comes in. They yeah. want to, to transform you in that. The main difference, uh, and me and Josh Koscheck for, for, for this season, I choose my team in different criteria than most of the guys in the past. I did not choose a, a, a single fighter because he was the strongest or he had the best uh, pedigree on paper. I choose guys who are very good, but guys that I know by watching them that I can help. When you will leave the training here at the end of the season, you will be a much better fighter than when you start. That's something that I can promise you. I promise you. This show for me is not about winning. This show is not about me. I'm not selfish. Uh, this show, it's about the guys. It's their show. It's their time to shine. Team GSP. <laughs> let's keep it red. Yeah, let's keep it red. Pretty good cardio, I gotta tell you that much for smoking cigarettes and drinking all the time. I, I don't really root for guys on here, but I like this kid. I, I'll 100% admit, I like Bruce Leroy. I like the kid's personality. He seems like a good kid. So I was happy to see him win. Winner, Bruce Leroy, triangle choke. Yes, guys. Well done. 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 I let everybody down, man. It happens. You know, what are you going to do? Sorry, Mom, Dad, everybody back home. I didn't mean to lose. My apologies, you know. I'll be back to it soon. Don't worry. Thank you, Coach. Hey, man, we come back. You. you might have a chance to come back. Yes, right? sir. I feel amazing. It's incredible that I could pick up this win, especially finish it in the second round when I was losing the first round. He was a tough mother man. Aye. What a character.
Watch this, watch this. Let's park right here. Just same Can I help you, sir? What? This is how we roll today. <laughs> oh, yeah. Real close. <laughs> like, straight up for him. You can't get in. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> nice. Over, 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 over. This one. Oh, hey, uh, pull this one over here. George's car was parked in the middle to where there was no cars on the right or left of him, and we just pretty much pulled our cars real, real close to his doors so that he couldn't get in. He ain't gonna get it. Hey, cough, cough, cough. Oh, let's cough. go train, boys. Hey, I think you're gonna have to here. get in from the truck. <laughs> <laughs> let's do it. Training's over. What's up, George? What's up? I'm here to compete, I'm here to win, and I'm gonna do things that get under your skin a little bit, you know, because if he's thinking more about me and more about fighting me and wanting to kick my ass because, you know, I can be a, a peckerhead, um, you know, that's good. That means he takes away from his guys. <laughs> oh, you gotta be kidding me. Josh, he tried to, to get underneath my skin, but I know it's, he's, not the, the, he's not the first guy that tried to do that. It's not my first ro rodeo. I've been bullied at, at school, you know, uh, all my life, you know, growing up, and uh, it's not something new. I'm used to deal with things like that, you know. A lot of people, they take my kindness for weakness. <laughs> I don't fight him, but wrestle. Hey, voila! Everything that he does, I'll keep it inside, and um, I will let it come out at the good moment. I'm in my office and I get a phone call from GSP. And he says, hey, listen, I know you're friends with Mike Tyson. I'm a huge Mike Tyson fan. And I would love to have him come talk to my team. You know, anybody who's, who's been a fan of fighting is a huge Mike Tyson fan. So uh, I called Mike. Mike said, absolutely, I'd love to come see it, because he's a huge fan of, not only is Mike Tyson a huge fan of, of the UFC and, and mixed martial arts, he's a huge fan of fighting, period. Whoa. Hey, what's up, George? Hey. What's happening, bro? Hey, Mike. Oh, my oh, God. Is, God. That's hey, awesome. You can. Beautiful. Yeah, it's a pleasure being here. Right. 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 Mark. God. Fighting in Big fan, so yeah. Fight? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hi, yeah, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been watching the UFC since it began with Shamrock, Dan Severin. You no, know, I met George on, um, in California from the fights, and I met him around. And I was just happy. I mean, it's really um, happy to be involved with this and just to come down. This is an awesome experience for you, huh? Yeah. Being on this show. Life, life changing. Well, you've been doing this all your life, George? Little yeah. kid? Yeah, karate, karate, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My, my head all growing I told you, my, my head all growing up. I was playing punch out, you know, and you were <laughs> the main guy at it. Oh, that's awesome. You could come here outside. But thank you so much. Yeah. Man, it's a pleasure, really. Oh, man, this is going to be awesome. <laughs> Watch him fight in there. <laughs> happened to Michael Johnson in his corner and he kept looking at Tyson. I don't know if it had anything to do with Tyson, but he comes out in the third round like a bat out of hell. <laughs> Going after Wilkinson, trying to take him out, hitting him with punches, drops him. <laughs> gets him down on the ground, starts grounding and pounding him. When Wilkinson turns his back, Johnson takes his back, puts in the choke, and uh, Wilkinson taps out. <laughs> Come on, Mike. Man, if every fight is like that back and forth, you guys are gonna make me have a heart attack before the end of the season. Seriously. Okay, fellas, let's debrief. Guys, we've got to finish every round strong. Okay? So critical in the eyes of the judges. Definitely having that privilege fighting in front of Mike Tyson was uh a uh, one-time thing, you know, I'm glad I uh, got the opportunity to do it. At this level of the game, when you're world champion, all that kind the only reason you win is because you're smarter. What my mentor always told me is it's all about confidence. You know, it's just um, you start thinking better and you start feeling better about yourself. You have to think day by day in every way. I'm getting better, better, and better. Confidence breeds success. Success breeds confidence. Confidence applied properly would you know, surpass a genius. There's nothing like confidence. There's just nothing like it. The whole name of the game is never getting discouraged. Definitely in the fight business, it's life. 
because it's constant. You constantly have a fight. It's always another battle, you know? When you're fighting in the ring, you always have to be careful how you conduct yourself because it, perhaps you conduct your life like that. This guy, he's like, like, he's seriously like my hero, Mike Tyson, you know? And what was tripping me out about it was the fact that, like, everything he was saying right then and there applied to me so much. I'm trying to hold you guys up. <laughs> Mike Tyson is a very deep guy. He's a very smart person, you know? As a matter of fact, I talk about my team learning, but I, I probably learn just as much as, much as them. The other day, Josh parked their car in a way that I couldn't get in. I tried to avoid confrontation with Josh. Now we got the momentum on our side, so I don't want to break that momentum. Leave that red team alone. You don't say much. Why is that? Keep the talking. I do my talking in the octagon. Why are you parking that same spot all the time? Because I don't want you to prank me. <laughs> you don't want me to prank you? Uh, I know you tried to do it. Yeah. So I'm on your mind every day when you come here. Oh, huh? yes, you are. That's good. Yeah, yeah it's very good for me. Yes, I like that. <laughs> so you can't prank me. <laughs> <laughs> He's a robot. <laughs> I don't mind losing. But to a nerd? Come on, boys. Get <laughs> together. You know, we're losing to a bunch of nerds. <laughs> you know? <laughs> nerds that can't even, the nerds that talk like robots. Huh? Is that the key, George? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> All right, I'm training him. Do I look good in mine? Cute, right? I don't like to watch men and no. speedos. It's not my thing watching a guy in underwear now. No. So why are you fighting us? All those guys in the stands, you like them looking at you? In the speedos? No? Mm -hmm. I'm, I might wear, I might rock them when we fight. I'll wear them white. How's that? Feel good with it. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, George. Bye, bye. Man, I, I would, I would handle it differently. He's, he's kind of a, uh, he's kind of a little bit quiet. You know, I would be like, hey, go f yourself. is definitely bringing in a, a huge variety of people from all over the world to help us train. Some of them, uh, you know, are boxing professionals. Some of them are Muay Thai specialists, wrestling, jiu-jitsu, everything. I brought my, my friend uh, Jean-Charles Skarboski uh, here today. Good friend of mine is a Muay Thai trainer from France, Paris. Paris, France. He's like, he's, not, he's a different human being. He's, a, he's like more... Uh, I don't know how to call that in English. He's a free thinker, you know? But the way he does, he's like amazing in it. He's a kind of guy, he spar. If you spar with him, you respect him, he's gonna respect you. If I've seen some guy try to prove a point with him and try to go hard in Muay Thai, he's gonna, he's gonna knock you out cold. He's a, he's a character, okay? So I want you to be, be uh, please be, be careful. Uh, he did a long, a long ride from Paris to come here. I want him to, to, be, to be respected, okay? So it's important for me. What George is trying to tell you, this could be the best experience of your life. Or the worst. worst. <laughs> exactly. Uh, we have no clue which one is going to be. My name is Jean-Charles Scarboski. I'm from Paris. I'm a Muay Thai teacher. One time I managed to be ranked number one at the Raja Damlin Stadium. That is one of the biggest stadium of Muay Thai in the, in the world. Come here, how are you? What's your name? Dan. Dan. Jean. Apparently, John Charles, he only sleeps like three hours a night, and before practice, he like gets wasted, like he just drinks a ton of alcohol and just goes in there with a bunch of MMA fighters and effortlessly beats them up. Like that's, I thought he was going to knee him in the head. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Jean-Charles is a very good guy. 
they're a very good person with a good heart, but you cannot have the same lifestyle that Jean Charles has because us, as a martial artist, we need to not smoke, we need to not drink. And Jean Charles, he, he lived in Thailand for a very long time, so in Thailand, it's different mentality. They smoke, they drink, and they they fight every day, you know. So. Sparring with Jean Charles is awesome, but at the same time, it sucks. <laughs> That guy is brutal. He beat us all up and he was drunk, so <laughs> that guy can fight. Georgie, if you kiss me now, I will leave MMA. <laughs> if you guys at home were here in our shoes right now, you'd probably be looking at Josh like the immature sixth grader, like a, like a 12-year-old boy. French kiss me now, you know you love yellow. And looking at George as he's the professional fighter. You know you love yellow, just say it. Like stuff like that, it bothers me yeah. deep down inside, you know, but uh, for sure, sometimes I wanted to say something, you know, I'm inside, I'm, I'm, I'm in rage, you know, I, w I want to do something bad, you know, I want to disrespect him, but I want to, to stay faithful to who I am. And being disrespectful, it's not who I am. Kiss me now, and I leave MMA. I want you to leave MMA. Yeah. Kiss me now, then. We're gonna make some money together. Kiss me now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he means off you. <laughs> Nah, not off. Cost check. He's just trying to be funny. <laughs> to me, he kind of seems like an idiot. Did you guys bring your wrestling shoes? Yeah, they're here. I got my singlet. All wrestlers. You wrestler too? Good. You a wrestler? No, no, no. Thai boxer. Thai boxer? I would assume Thai boxer. Oh, yeah? Russian. Nice. Where are you from? I from France. France? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, France. What is this? No, man. One of George's coaches, uh, Jean something, the Frenchie, um, you know. <laughs> wow. How was rehab? You went to rehab today? No. <laughs> <laughs> dude, cost is dude will okay your ass. <laughs> cost check is always trying to play around, play the little games. George don't like to do it, but uh, I ain't got no problem with it. I, I can talk trash pretty good. Do you guys have practice today? Wouldn't you like to know? Well, you know, it's all fun. You want to come learn something? No. Maybe Cody tried to do that to trash talk with Josh to protect me, but I, I'm a grown man. I don't need protection, you know. Be nice, you know, it, it, it's gonna come back to you. Don't think it's because I'm scared or something. I'm, I'm not scared of this guy. Like, man, people know me, how I grew up and, and things like that. I, man, I, I, I face people in my life, like in, I've, been fa I've been caught in a situation that I had to go and fight guys. Like, there were five guys on me and I did it. They were like four years older than me and I, and I still did it. I'm, I'm not a coward. But when I have a guy like him, he tried to get in my face, and I, I get out, you know? I, I, no, I keep it, it boiling inside, but I get out because me, it's when you cross the line. Me, I don't do nothing, but if he cross the line and if I feel my well-being is jeopardized, boom, now it's time to go. It, the day that he will cross or he will physically do something to me, right away, boom, finish. It's gonna be, I'm telling you, it's gonna be a disaster. Bring it on, come on. Sure. I never... yeah. The right way, the right way. about to start and uh, Stevens puts up his glove and is asking, you know, are we gonna touch gloves? And Cody McKenzie looks at him and says, no. And uh, Stevens is kind of like, all right. Now bring it on, come on. Cody came out like a bull right away from the beginning. He ran through Mark Steven, right away charged him. So he took him off guard completely. And when he took him off guard, Steven get back to what he does best, wrestling. As soon as he goes in for that double leg, Thinks in that choke. The good thing is, Mark, you know, he did get to the proper side, but he didn't attack the hand, and that was where he made the mistake. Nice, nice, we got it. 
and the next thing you know, he's asleep. He doesn't even get time to tap. He goes right to sleep. <laughs> Koscheck was absolutely horrified when Stevens gets choked out unconscious in under 20 seconds by George St. Pierre's number six pick. Horrified. Your winner, moving on with a submission victory, Cody McKenzie. It was good that we took Josh number one's pick. Of course, the odds were not on our side for that fight, but it's 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 fun to see one of our guys win. I'm, I'm happy, you know. Oh, I can't believe, man. Bro, I can't believe this, man. All the people who thought I shouldn't be here. Uh, Bye. <laughs> I'm here and I ain't going nowhere. Hey guys, guys, guys. Seriously, listen, listen to me, guys. Okay? Do you remember when they won the fight? They hit the wall yeah. of cocky. I don't want the in my team. No. I want no. you to be nice. Okay? I'm sure Koscheck would have talked to me if I would have lost this fight. I, he, he's that kind of guy. I'm sure he would have liked to rub it in my face. The fact that we were nice, it's the element of surprise. If your character in the house is being a bully, you know, being a, an alpha male and Hey man, it's my place. Uh, get out of here. You know, like th this, this is wrong because the, in the fight, the guy they're gonna expect you to come aggressive. But if you're a nice guy, you know, and every time, you know, like like me, like like when when Josh he said bad thing about me, I'm nice. I'm nice. It's okay. Like I don't answer. But I guarantee you, man, when I'm gonna fight them, I'm gonna go all in. You know what I mean? So be nice. Have nothing else. <laughs> Wow. There's seven minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. 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 Oh. 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 God, Josh, why did you put my uh, sandals? <laughs> why do you gotta blame it on me? I guess I know you were hanging out not far away from it. <laughs> But, as I can see, you know, what happened to your eye? Got cut. Oh, I've been yeah. training with my guys every day, you know? Yeah. So, it's a pretty bad cut. Hmm? It's a pretty bad cut. Yeah. Yeah. Don't worry, I'll be fine in this. I love it. You will? Yeah. Mm. Where, where do you put it? I'm not going to hit you there. I'm going to hit you right here. No problem. We'll see it. Right on there. Yeah. yeah. Good luck with that. Yeah, you'll see. <laughs> I wanted to keep my uh, cut low-key from Koscheck, but uh, Koscheck unfortunately saw it. So he was like, blah, 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 blah. But uh, what, what, what can I do? <laughs> Excuse me. I didn't see you there. How did you not see my black ass here? I didn't see you. I'm You're sorry. Right. Dressed in white today. Kostya can't bait George to talk to him, so he's pushing my buttons. I'm not afraid of the guy. I don't, give a I don't care. So, period, the end. He's a dick and he knows he is. We're trying to be classy, okay? We're not trying to stoop down to your level. Okay? Yeah, that's fine. It's okay, keep it positive. It's for the guys, not your bull. It is positive. Go buy a friend. I got lots Go of there, friends. Talk to your little cronies. Who's my cronies? Who is Brad Tate? You know, I don't know why you're here. Um, you're a male nurse, and I don't know why you're here. You know, nobody knows why he's here. Only George does. What do you do anyway? You're a male nurse? Now you're making fun of my profession. You're a male nurse. Damn. That's awesome. <laughs> you're a male nurse. I'm a medic, but I'm not a nurse. He thinks he's hurting my feelings by calling me a male nurse. Jesus, I mean... Really? It's a male nurse. Really? That's... Mm. It's cute. I would love for you to get hurt in front of me. Yeah. I've experienced a lot of pain. That's so cute. Yeah. Male nurse. Really? Mm. There's a lot of people out there that do what I do. Yeah, I know. like it. I know. I'm, as long as you like it. It's cool. Male nurse. Mm. It's like, bro, you're a male nurse. You're not a fighter. You shouldn't open your mouth. Yeah, very interesting. Because I'll choke your ass out. 
I'll knock you out. <laughs> you know? Male nurse. I think that one got under his skin a little bit. You know? Just a little bit. I think I won that one today. One, two, one, two. Is baseball? I'm f***ing an idiot. I didn't play this sport growing up, you know? George doesn't know baseball, yes. It's an American sport. I was like, oh, sh <laughs> this, uh, this is going to be hard. I never played baseball in my life. Come run, Derby! Here's how it's going to work. There's a pitching machine that will pitch to you. You're going to get 10 pitches. We're going to do three innings. If you get over the first fence here, you get one point. You get over the second fence, you get three points. And if you hit a home run, you get six points. At the end of three innings, the coach with the most points wins the $10,000 in cash. Yeah. Show me the money. Okay? The winning team will also get $1,500 each. Okay? Team Koscheck hasn't done so well in this competition so far. So to come in and beat George St. Pierre, at least at the at the coach's challenge, would feel good for Josh. Focus, Josh. You were born for this, Josh. I haven't played baseball since probably about 13 years old, so a lot of uh, anxiety about having uh, rust. <laughs> you ready, Koscheck? Get ready. Heckle his ass. George, you can do nothing! George! I was very excited because there's no way we're gonna let GSP win this competition. He's never swung a bat before? No. He's never even held a bat before. Ah, I'm gonna have to your performance! George! Savak gets the best heckler of the year award. I'm not happy with your performance! If you know, if that's what you're going for, if that's what you want to be the best at in the house, then you got it, buddy. You know, hey, you win this one. Koscheck seven, St. Pierre three. I was doing better. I hit the ball a couple of times. At the end of the second inning, George St. Pierre is starting to get the hang of this thing and uh, get his rhythm. You know, he hit a couple over, and uh, I was real concerned with that. All right, it's 16 to 10. Koscheck's winning. This is the last inning, and this is his That's last up at bat right, right here. Nice easy swings, Kosh. Just connect. You know, uh, I said, all right, relax, get focused, and, uh, you know, think back of uh, playing baseball when you're a kid, you know? Koscheck comes out in the third inning. He ends up getting his timing down and just starts crushing the ball out into the outfield. I just kind of uh, got in stride, got in that groove, and started cranking him out. Stop. Yeah! I'm very happy with your performance, Josh. This is George's last up at bat. Uh, for the third inning, I was kind of uh, stressed, and uh, I wasn't able to, to hit any ball. Hold on! Uh, yeah!
Team Koscheck, finally, these guys feel good about themselves. Not only did they win the coach's challenge, but every one of those guys all won some money. Get used to this feeling. You're good in that pick at worst sport for me, my friend. In a baseball court, it's better than me, but in the octagon, I, I will prevail. Man, next time we'll play hockey. That's cool. Ice hockey? I play. Ice hockey. Yeah. George, what happened today here on this baseball field? Get used to it. One, two, three. Yes, buddy! Because come December, mm, you're going to have the same feeling. Swing and a miss. Swing and a miss again. Bap. I crack a home run. Lights out. When you lose that fight, you better be a man and be like, Tate, George was a better man. No, no, no. I'm What's not the losing. Bet? The bet for what? How could you possibly Why win? Why would I bet you? Who are you? I'm Who are you? talking to you right now. Yeah, but right you're the male nurse. You. Tate, the male nurse, he's ballsy for someone that doesn't know how to fight. There's plenty of men that do male nurses in good professions. Mm -hmm. so now you're knocking people that do mm -hmm. good professions. Mm -hmm. I'm not a male nurse. Yeah. I'm a paramedic. You're a male nurse. Either way. What are you? Either, I'm you a, a guy that got his ass whooped with a peroxide I'm, bottle. I'm a, I'm a fighter. He kind of, you know, kept talking more. And then I was like, all right, this ain't going to shut up. We're going to have to get in his face a little bit. Get out of Don't be coming in here. Don't, don't come. Don't. Come on, Tate. <laughs> I'll get you. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Yeah, there was nothing ever really got too uh, too heated in there. Um, we kept it very professional. Don't, don't break your face, bitch. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Give me my plunger back. past me, which, if you're going to embarrass me, you're going to do more than that. <laughs> huh? Oh, look at your friends right there. Go with your little boys. Like, you're not funny, you know, so. Yeah. I'm going to get a date now, because you showed my national television. Thank Wait. You. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, you're getting that nothing there. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> we needed, we needed, we needed something for you. We need uh, something for you. Night? Yeah. Have you ever been cut? Have you ever been cut? I, 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 yeah. been I, cut? Don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, for somebody, you were murdered. That's just way. trying to just get on, just become famous, man. Just unbelievable. You got famous because he still beat you. Nah. <laughs> you get famous getting nah. beat. Nah, 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 nah. What's the last thing you accomplished in life? Yeah. How to fake, how to fake a knee? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I accomplished how to grasp the Vaseline up my ass. <laughs> don't talk about it. Don't talk to me. Yeah. <laughs> Fake me. Why? Uh, you're a male nurse, bro. Dude, is that the <laughs> fish? I'm gonna <laughs> you up in about two minutes. So I got yeah, no. 120 more seconds? Listen, bro. Why are you putting your hands on me, Chuck? I'm trying to f***ing hell. good, man. What the f***? I'll beat your ass. And you know it. I don't remember what happened. I just know that I just was, somebody was pushing me in the face and I kept pushing them back and, uh, you know, it was just kind of like, you know, you lose it, you know, you snap. Let's go. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Male nurse over here running his mouth. George is trying to make me look bad by bringing this guy in and yapping in my ear and trying to, you know, get at me. I don't know if George hired this guy to come around. I don't know who he is. But apparently, George likes this guy, and he associates with those type of people. Not me. I don't associate with, with, with guys like that. I mean, where's the man? I was just trying to help him. And then he put his hands on me. Just stiffed on my face. Like, who wouldn't get pissed off? I'll get it there, Ezra. No worry. You know, when I came back to realization and I saw um, Dane walking out, and I was like, oh, what just happened? Dane. 
Listen, you were pushing me in the face. I wasn't touching. Yes, what? you were. I was not touching your okay. face. Well, I hey, thought you were. Okay, man. Somebody was pushing me in the face, and I didn't mean it. Some guy comes up and apologizes for something. It's like, what, are you just supposed to say F you? So I just accept the apology because I'm a gentleman. You all right? Take a deep breath. It's fine. I got it, George. The, the problem was between these two guys. It's fine. You all right? Okay, just take a second. It's definitely George St. Pierre's fault. I believe that George didn't want the pressure of talking so he hired this guy, Brad Tate, to come in, run his mouth, and pretty much get under my skin. Smart move, George, because you it worked. You want to hold hands and walk out? All right, let's go, guys. Come here. Hey, Tate, come here. Let's go. Stop. I told Tate three times to not trash talking. I told all my guys to not trash talking. I felt like I was in the kin kindergarten, you know? It's, it's, it was crazy. Guys, get around, sit down, and keep your mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. I told you yesterday, training will change, all right? What I want to do with you, I want to do the same thing with you that I do when I get ready for a fight. So tomorrow, it's going to be one training session a day. And it's not going to be a hardcore training session. It's no more sparring, no more hardcore training. It, it's all done. The thing that we can improve now, it's tactical. Tactical. All right? And that's what I'm going to work with you. I know at one point you will feel like you want to push a little bit hard, but please don't. Because it's good, I want, I want to make you hungry. I want to make you feel like, F I feel like I don't train enough. So when I'm gonna let you go in the cage, you'll be like an animal, like blah, you'll be ready to go. I want you to be like this. Cody, what you gonna do to them fam? I'm gonna kick him in his head. Cody is very confident in himself. When he describes the way he's gonna beat the guy, it's literally like, oh, I'm gonna walk through this guy. And he, he believe in it so much that it would be the same thing as if I tell you the sun will rise tomorrow. That's how much Cody believe in himself. <laughs> <laughs> no, He's no crazy, you know, this guy is crazy. <laughs> to the body. <laughs> Down goes McKinsey. <laughs> Down goes McKinsey. Uh, just uh, after Nam Fam won the fight, he was like, he was not very uh, sportmanship. He tried to make us lose control. He tried to, to get underneath my skin, you know? He get underneath my skin, you know, he get in my mind, which is, which is a good thing, because um, every time I'm training, I'm thinking about him, about how I'm gonna beat him. Whew. This little Cody was talking so much bull That was the best day of the show, of this competition, seeing Cody get his ass whipped and now making it to the semifinals. That was personal. Don Paz was on with TKO due to strikes. Yeah. When I told them that Freddie was going to come, they, 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 they told me, oh, can we talk to him? I'm like, no, you're not only going to talk to him, he's going to train you. And they were like, what? They were like shaking. One. Oops. Two. I have four world champions in my gym right now. I train Manny Pacquiao. I've trained 27 world champions all together. One, two. One, two. Okay. Be careful about when you jab. Don't bring your head forward. Okay. If I can make someone a better fighter or I help them become a better fighter, I, that's what I was born to do, and that's that's what I want to do. Jab, right hand, left hook. I transfer weight, okay? Ready, Roach, man. That's a hell of an experience, man, because sometimes you wonder, like, what does Pacquiao do, you know? Or, you know, what does this guy do? Look at me. And when you hear it straight from the product's mouth, it, it don't get no realer than that. This is going to be a good, good move here. When you come in, jab, hook to my body. Boom. Make a pivot. There. Freddie helped me tighten up on some of my boxing skills. Uh, just 
staying real sharp, you know. Uh, I worked on footwork with Freddie, and I didn't expect anything less. <laughs> That's it. Freddie Roach is a boxing pioneer, you know, he's been around. One, two, under, now two, right. <laughs> Michael Johnson, just a uh, good kid, good speed. He reminds me of Pacquiao a little bit. I am extremely impressed with the cast of coaches that George St. Pierre has brought by for this season. I mean, training with Freddie Roach. One, two. And it was pretty amazing. I mean, I, I have to admit, the guy knows his Everything's nice and loose, nice and loose, nice and loose, until we get there. <clears throat> two. Alex, he's a little clumsy and a little awkward, but you know what? He's, he's very effective. I mean, he knows what he's doing. He knows distance pretty well, and uh, I think he's going to do really good in this fight. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. What is smell. You're a funny guy. I see you tied up those pants nice and tight, too. Mm -hmm. You don't oh, want yeah. to get pants, huh? No? Go. Ladies first. Okay. <laughs> I have to watch it. You want to put my pants down. <laughs> I think my relationship with GSP is right there. The good thing is I get an opportunity to redeem myself, and that comes in December when I get to beat George St. Pierre's ass. On Saturday, December 11th, the championship is on the line as George St. Pierre defends his welterweight belt in a rematch against opposing coach Josh Koscheck. I was motivated to fight Josh Koscheck before the fight and now even more because of the trash talk. I'm not gonna hit you there, I'm gonna hit you right here. No problem, let's be right on that. Yeah. I don't wanna just beat him, I don't wanna just win a decision, I wanna whip his ass. I've never been so excited for a fight of my life and tonight is happening right here in Montreal and I'm ready to kick his ass. A UFC record crowd of over 23,000. He's a true martial artist and a spectacular fighter with no weaknesses. Weigh-ins very intense 24 hours ago. Look at the intensity. George stepped up to Josh and put his fist in his face. Earlier tonight, the arrival of the French-Canadian welterweight champion, George Rush St. Pierre. I fought Koshek before. I know his strength, I know his weaknesses. I don't like that Gosh, has said a lot of bad stuff about me. I don't like losing to nobody, okay? Especially a French guy. Immediately, St. Pierre takes him down. Oh, oh, hit kind of like by GSP. I talked right to his face. Hit you right here. No problem. We'll see you. Right on there. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck with that. Oh, he's hurt badly. He's out of This guy can't beat me. There's no way. He like to be the bad guy, and he's a perfect villain, you know? I cannot ask for a better matchup than this. Yeah, that's right, Montreal. How about that? The champion 29, the challenger 33, GSP, will have a three-inch reach advantage. It's time! George Rush St. P. Gentlemen, we've been over the rules. Protect yourself at all times. Follow my instructions. Gonna keep it clean. Touch it up. Make it official. And what's interesting is that Josh Koscheck has said that what he wants to do is keep this fight up. Let's see if that's the case. Not long. Koscheck wall walking. One, one, two, and a big jab again. And Josh is pressing forward, and as he does, George gets him again. Koscheck avoids that time. There's the big swing. Oh, he tagged him. Got him with that second jab big time, Joe. Can he stuff it? Yes. He stuffed it, and George eats a knee. It's from those jabs of George St. Pierre. Yeah, that's a stiff jab. Oh, and, and again, again he catches him. Inside leg kick again, and jab. Too quick so far, Joe. 
St. Pierre literally trains all and over and the Josh world. Josh is blinking now. His eyes are watering. It's landing on his nose. Now it's Koscheck thinking about a takedown. George stuffs it. St. Pierre. Josh is trying very hard for this takedown. Still able to avoid. Does he get it? Yes. They're eating him up with that jab, baby. Excellent. Beautiful. Listen. All the way out. All the way in. Okay? This is why Josh Koscheck's eye is swollen. It's the crisp, technical striking of George St. Pierre. That snapping jab. Superman jab. Now George is teeing off on him, Mike. He's putting a lot more pop into these shots. He landed that jab again hard, right on that swollen eye. He threw Coming a kick to the body. Check. Hard kick to the body by George. Caught him again. Hand. The hip snap right back. Him. That one wobbled him. And they'll try to press. Oh, he landed Good an combination uppercut. by Josh Koscheck. He landed a hard uppercut, Mike. You're waiting way too much. You got to come at him and put two, three, two together, all right? Put them together. You got to keep that hand. You got to keep that right up. And you got to let him go. And right out looking to establish the jab as the champion. He nailed him with that right hand. Again, with the inside leg kick, and he comes up high. You know, George's strikes, one of, the, one of the things that's so good about him is the same reason why he's such a good takedown artist. It's his ability to cover distance so quickly. Trying to get control here. But GSP able to win on the feet. There's the jab. Cost check and St. Pierre tie up one more time. Don't hold the gloves. Man, not even close. Not even close. He's opening up now. Kick at the end of the round by GSP. Circle and jab. You need to make sure you keep your hands up. Circle and jab. You understand me? The Superman jab, over and over again, finding Josh Koscheck's face. Huh? Get, up soon, the right Get that Chris Kringle dude out of there. He's fine. <laughs> oh, no. Get out of there, dude. You can fight, right? Okay. Herb Dean. Yeah. Herb Dean knows what's up. Yep. You got that right. Get out of there, Chris Kringle. There, Jones. Big takedown by He's GSP. Got He's got, got his back. back. Koscheck. Trying to stay out of trouble here. St. Pierre with a tremendous pace here in this grappling contest. Knee. He need him in that eye. Come on. Oh, clipped him with the left. Nice counter left hook. Pushed aside. Oh, uh, there's the hook you talked about, Joe. Didn't lead with the jab, but connects with the hook. He's been hit so many times in that eye. Yep. He's so concerned. And George is just lighting him up now. George pushing the tempo here. Oh, there's that left hook. The thing is, now he's only seeing out of one eye, so his distance is going to be screwed up. He doesn't do well when you come forward and move your head to You got your shape. Push way. it. Last one of your life, boss. Man, they're trying to work on that eye, Joe. Just jumps into it, extends this is, his reach. This is easily the most jabs I've ever seen anyone land in a mixed martial arts fight. No question about it. There, he tried it again. St. Pierre. This might be the best GSP we've seen. And down. And he's got his back. Koscheck trying to get up. One minute remains in the fight. This fight is over. That's it. Great show of class and respect after 25 minutes of battle inside the octagon. And the real question after this performance might be now what? Yeah. What's next? Who's going to challenge this guy? I mean, who out of all the 170 pounders truly stands out?
And that is the story of the fight, ladies and gentlemen. Perhaps the most jab-heavy performance. And still, the undisputed UFC. Congratulations, my, my hat is up to him because he came here in Montreal in hostile territory to fight me. So I think he deserves a little bit of, uh, of props, everyone. The champion, ladies and gentlemen, George St. Pierre. Somebody wants to see his yo yo. There's a knock at the door, so I went over to um, answer it. Much to my surprise, it was George St. Pierre. Oh, wow. It's like Christmas. Not who I expected to see at the door. Man, I'm hungry. You guys have food? Yeah. Oh, oh. Are you, are you guys so many years looked up to him, and he's just like, like he's he's my favorite fighter, one of one of my idols. Powerful takedown. Oh, big right by Sapphire. George picks him up, throws him down. I don't think I could um, name another fighter that's as you know, classy and humble in defeat and victory. The greatest welterweight champion in UFC history. And to meet him in person, it was like, it was so surreal. Before you start your training camp, and you fight someone, you have to analyze him and an analyze you. So you know what he does better than you, and you know what you do better than him. So then you can plan a strategy. How you're gonna take him out of his comfort zone. As you build up a strategy, you're gonna develop drills. Drills, striking drill, grappling drills, technical drill, setup drill that you're gonna do during your fight. And you're gonna repeat those drills so many times during your training camp that it will become automatic. So when you're gonna fight, you don't have to think when you fight. When I fought Hendrix the other week, I was not thinking. I was not there, I was on cruise control the whole fight. As soon as he moved to do that, I did it so many times, my brain recognized this movement pattern and the reaction to that pattern was a takedown. They were looking at him uh, with the eyes very open. They won't blink to, 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 don't, lose, to don't lose any second of it. And uh, they are very inspired of him. Even if I see him every day uh, at the gym, uh, it's, it's still good to, uh, to listen to him, uh, share some, uh, some thoughts about his uh, experiences. But I, I'm not happy because I like when I win, like my opponent knows that I'm better than him. And for this fight, I believe he doesn't know. He believes he wins. So. Yeah, I'm not happy with the fight. I'm not yeah. happy with the fight. But then at the end of the fight, I see the Andrix, he was, uh, he was angry, you know? And uh, I asked uh, Ferraz and Christophe, they listened to me, man, did I really won or I didn't want? And Ferraz said, yes. Christophe, say, Christophe said, if, I, if you would lose, I would tell you, you lose, I believe you won. And, and they say, yes, I won. If it's deep down inside, I believe I would I lose. I would not live like that. I don't feel good. I would, I would give away at the, the belt, you know? How you preserve yourself as a martial artist has, has to do how you train. Some guy they know they train a hundred freaking twenty percent all day, all the time. They're gonna spar like all the time, like full on, like bang, 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 and they're gonna hurt themselves eventually. You have to you have to to see your career like a marathon, not as a sprint. It's not about who got the biggest balls, you know? It's not about that. <laughs> For some guys, it is. <laughs> For, no, 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 but... <laughs> no, 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 but... For, Bring your balls to the game! <laughs> Two hard sparring sessions per week may not be that much, but there's 52 weeks in a year, so it's like 104 times you're going to get punched in the face, and it takes its toll on you, so we're just discussing that. And um, it really, really opens your eyes, and you think, you know, if I want to be doing this in 10, 15 years' time, that, that's how I've got to train. So, man... You have to think about this. Yeah. You're not going to fight all your life, man. You're going to fight maybe 10, 15 years, 20 years. You're going to fight all your life. It's up to you to make yourself, make a plan, do, do it the best you can. I took a lot away from meeting him. Just, just things about training, um, smart, planning your training, um, coming into fights with a good strategy, and also just thinking long term about your longevity in the sport. To see that if I want to stay successful to what I do, I need to still have the fire inside of me. 
If you fight and if you don't have the fire, you're gonna get knocked out, you're gonna get badly injured. And I just need to know, I'm gonna take some break and I make a decision to see if I still have the fire and see and take my decision what I want to do. If I accomplish half of what Georges St. Pierre did in his career, um, for me it would be a, a dream come true and I would be really proud. George Rush St. Pierre, the winningest fighter in UFC history. Thank you.